Um, and that somehow um, it's relied on uh, uh, federation capabilities uh, that uh, we have another session of uh, uh, federation uh, that um, really the actual mechanism how to federate the MDSAL and the federation manager will utilize those uh, capabilities. Uh, over here we want to discuss about um, the federation, more about the federation manager itself. Um, uh, it's more about a network federation manager. And some of the capabilities is just a few NetVirt uh, uh, capabilities that are good without, even without uh, federation. So, <coughs> Uh, in basic, what's the why we created this uh, federation is uh, to allow uh, multiple uh, open stacks, multiple uh, sites, uh, to share the same uh, networks. So, if you have, uh, for example, three sites A, B, and C, each one has a different uh, its own network. You want to say that the orange networks and the blue networks will be the same network between different open stacks. Okay? So that capability is not existing between open stacks because each open stack is its own, uh, its own uh, environment and you want to federate them all uh, uh, together. So to create some kind of a ubiquitous networking between the, uh, the location. So we had to use the deluxe uh, GUI for that um, because it's beyond the OpenStack scope. It's not in the Newton API. It's beyond them. So uh, we, opened, we put it in, uh, in part of Open Daylight uh, API. And the resources are across the uh, site. Uh, you need to configure them. And in addition, you need also uh, to manage them. Okay, so you want a, a consistent view between of that uh, uh, networks between the location of uh, the different uh, sites. So, <clears throat> the how it looks from an ODL perspective, just to uh, be sync between uh, everyone, and we we'll start with the uh, presentation, and then we can go to discussion. So. I just want to sync on the knowledge about uh, with all the team. Um, so the left side is a regular Newton ML2 networking ODL, whether it's V1 or V2, that uh, you are familiar with that, uh, calling Newton northbound, update the MD SAL, and NetVirt communicate with the NetVirt SAL event. Okay? Obviously, NetVirt I activate OVSDB and OpenFlow, goes to the OpenFlow switch, and that's enabled the Newton networking. Okay, now I want to federate that. Okay, so we, we use the federation platform, which is another discussion, which is just a, you can think about it as a as a messaging bus. Okay, with a, a filter get and register capabilities between the location. Okay, of the MDSAL, and the federation service decides of which more the the network federation plugin decide which objects of the net field he will replicate or send to which site okay so the network federation plugin is belong to he is net field aware okay he knows uh, he, when the other <coughs> okay we'll we'll get that so from the top level view the orchestration tells the or orchestration or GUI tells the the federation manager which network to federate. The federation managers talk to the federation uh, uh, plugin and says like which network needs to federate. That's how the federation plugin knows that which event do I need to send to other site. Okay? If you have any question, if it's not well clear, I can answer. Uh, so I want a federated tenant uh, to be mapped to a different location. Um, I do a, a register 
of the other side to my to to me. Okay, that one I'm I'm a, a, a federating to them, and <clears throat> and i every update that I have in my uh, I get for example a new uh, VM coming in into my OpenStack. Okay, and a new port comes up. Okay, the port is in the Netfield model. The federation gets that uh, port. If there is other side that needs to know about that port, then he will put it, uh, send it to the federation, and the federation will transfer the information to the other side. So there is kind of a filter which is Netfield aware to say which event goes to which sites. <clears throat> so what's that create from a model perspective? So each side, for example, over here, the, um, okay. each side has its own Netfield model, okay? In Netfield you have uh, OVSS, uh, VM ports belong to network, okay? So this is uh, the, the view of old, of uh, abstract view of Netfield in, uh, in one side, and the other side, and the third side, okay? So that's the abstract view. It can be a cluster of ODL, but, or it can be a single instance, you don't care, really. just the model, okay? What happens if you want to federate those network, the, uh, the blue and the orange, okay? So we created a shadow uh, instances of those ports and the, and the needed OVSs in the other side, okay? So I uh, created those shadows for each one on the other side and they register on the changes, okay, for that specific network. So if it's a new port will create it for that, per for that uh, federated uh, network, it will be notified to the other side. Same as delete and all of that. So it created a shadow and each, uh, <clears throat> each side knows about the others. And we created a tunnel between the different OVSs as needed based on the uh, network uh, usage, usage. And you have the VXLAN. So oh, we don't have the uh, joint. So complete solution will have a connection as needed, it looks like it was a single site, okay? Now, Maybe we the, the demo itself. yeah, so we have a bit, we have the, the demo also part, so this is a, our, a, a the downstream code that we are going to upstream that into carbon. So immediately uh, after the DDF, that uh, will push that, uh, uh, that code. And what we created is, uh, is a few capabilities in the uh, cross side. Some are good for a cross side, but some of them even for a single side are good because we, we added capabilities to uh, visibility into what's going on in the network. Okay, so as I uh, will mention, and the purpose of this federation manager is we have two use cases. One of them is to configure the connectivity between the, the sites, and the other one is for monitoring and troubleshooting. Uh, the, what actually happened in the site. So we start with uh, defining uh, the site, which site we want to use, and how to get the information from. So in, when you look at the, uh, what we have over here, uh, the top table actually defines the list of sites. Okay. Okay. I'll be the pointer guy. And 
we define here the set of sites that we want to manage, okay? Um, for each one of them, we define how to connect to the open stack uh, in this site and to the one of the ODLs, which we assume it's a cluster and you can reach in any one of them to get the information. Uh, each one has its own credential and we fetch the relevant information for, from each one of them. Uh, the bottom table defines a federated tenants, uh, which is something that's relevant only for the federation manager. It doesn't pop uh, propagate to any of the sites. It's something that we use in order to be able to assign a specific tenant from the site to something more general. And, and if you look in the configuration for each one of the site, each one we fetch the tenant from the open stack and attach the federated tenant into it. So in this example for site one, host one, we are using federated admin to manage all the network and all uh, the network information for, that was created by the tenant admin, admin in this open stack. We wanted to preserve the the same logic is an open stack that you have a user in the open stack. The user belongs to multiple uh, tenants, and each tenant has its own uh, network. Okay, so we created a, a user in the federation. The in the in the user of the federation, it has its own federated tenant, and you need to associate a federated tenant into each open stack tenant that you have. Okay, so you need a credential for that. OpenStack uh, tenant that you need uh, the ODL to, to read from and to decide that uh, association. Okay, so go to the second tab. So no, this is a, uh, more as a the second uh, time configuration per, per user in the tenant, okay? Okay, and um, just select one of the tenants in the combo box or go to the second tab. Okay, so for example, if we select the federated tenant that called federated admin, it means that all the network that was created in all the sites that relevant to this, uh, that was assigned to this federated tenant, all of them are exist over here, and it allow us to connect and have the connectivity between the sites. So we pick one of the subnets, it auto automatically propagate from the site, the uh, federation manager query each one of the ODLs, get the list of uh, potential uh, networks, collect them over here, and from now on we can connect a specific subnet to have the connectivity between them. So if you just open one of them, okay. By selecting uh, the specific site that we want to connect and click on the collected site, the, the Federation Manager will send an RPC, invoke an RPC on each one of the relevant sites, and will, then this RPC will say, okay, I want to add the NetVir model in order to have the, con the connectivity uh, ready for uh, having flow that runs between the, between the sites. Um, Right now we have we already configured subnet 2 and subnet 3 and as you can see we have also subnet 1 which is not connected and let's go to the network topology just select one of the tabs that already open it's the second another one this is the physical okay um, as I said we have the configuration side and we have the monitoring and troubleshooting side and the network topology tab over here help us to, uh, man to do some maintenance on the network. We have physical, that is moving right now. <laughs> uh, the physical is actually, uh, we are showing over here the OVSs in each one of the sites and any links over here is a tunnel that is configured between the OVSs. Right now we have a full mesh, so this is why you see too many, a lot of links between them and they are all aggregate under the site. So when you can see which site are connected to uh, which other site, it's, uh, which other OVS is in the other site. And each one of the links representing a two endpoint of source and target. Yeah, and if we are on the DDF, so we want to add capability over here, is that to see the, the counters of that specific link. 
and even up to open up a Wireshark on that specific link, okay? And it needs to be tenant aware. So admin can see everything that goes, but uh, if I'm a, a user that is not admin, I'm only uh, able, should I be able to see only the traffic that belong to my tenant, okay? And we still want to do that on a VXLAN tunnel that, that run everything. So I should be able to see only my counters that I'm affecting those tunnels and only my traffic of a, of a Wireshark of that traffic of that belongs to me. And that is a little bit requiring a little bit a addition to current network model of creating additional counters and additional marking of the of things that are going into the tunnel. Okay, what we already have, so go to the logical, the other tab. Just, okay, and I arrange it, so don't move anything. <laughs> uh, the logical view is actually representing the network themselves, not the physical stuff, the, uh, the network. And as you can see, we have in each one of the site, we have uh, four networks, the access, uh, the external, Real. <laughs> it was arranged perfectly until you touch it. <laughs> okay. But now it's working. I used the remote desktop. It, didn't, it was slow. So yeah, because it's, it's, late. it's late in Israel, so it's still working. <laughs> and so what we have here, it's again, it's aggregation. We have aggregation of sites that aggregate the set of networks that defined in this uh, OpenStack site. Uh, Every time I look around, I see something else. <laughs> okay, to remember the location, so it's good. And for each one of the network, we have the, the IPs, the port that attach to this network. So in this case, uh, we have five VMs, five port, uh, VM ports, Newton ports, actually each one of them, and that belong to this network. And for troubleshooting, we can now you can click, okay. Uh, right here we see the counters on the port that goes to this VM, actually to these specific uh, VM ports. And you can see the counter that increasing, we're actually fetching the information from the OVS itself, getting to the flow and just get the statistic from it. Um, and we have uh, the rate graph on the side. Um, this is for counters, and if we'll open, I'm not, I don't have the Wireshark open, but you can show it in the presentation. If we start, uh, we start a tap, a traffic that goes to this VM will be forwarded to an OVS, which is located in the Federation Manager ODL, and we are also using ODL for uh, manage, to run the Federation Manager. And as you know, and there is problem to display, to expose the traffic uh, when you are using DPDK. So we have an OVS on the Federation Manager, which is non-DPDK. Uh, and on this, on the port over there, we are using Wireshark to expose the traffic to, and we are using TCP dump to expose it to Wireshark. So we have, uh, it's, if we start the tap, the traffic of this VM that goes in and out for this VM will go, uh, we can see it in, a, in the Wireshark. Um, okay. Yeah, you can. Try to open up the Wireshark while I'm on the. You're connected to the VM, right? Yeah. No. No, it's not there. This is not an IP as far as I know. <laughs> No, maybe IPv8 or something. In the physical view? Yeah, right now we already implemented the, the counters for the VM ports, okay? But the plan is to have it uh, on tunnels, on physical, maybe to get it from the machine itself. But as an example for this demo, just implemented for the VM. But basically, it's just an additional RPC that know how to query the information and everything from northbound from that should be the same. 
Um, so, still have time? Or? Uh, yeah, actually, between the nodes, we are using uh, uh, VXLAN tunnels. So basically, uh, any traffic that you can have in a single site is the same as going to another site. So basically, layer two or layer three doesn't matter. If you have a router, let's say you are working in a single site, you're supposed to have a router that connects between the, it will work the same over here. You should have some kind of router between them, okay, that know how to transfer from a specific subnet to another one. It will but still work. Well, I don't need a router, it's a layer two. Yeah. 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 Each site, in terms of OpenStack, it's a separate standalone and. So, so expanding that, that question, if I would have the same uh, subnet, but it's actually managed and provisioned by two different instances of Open Daylight, how would you. Oh, sorry, of open the OpenStack. Stack. Yeah, so basically you can have a problem if there are conflict between the, but the one that wants to connect these two sides should be aware, aware of these conflicts and solve them separately. Uh, yeah, tenant is not something that ODL is aware of. No, so you, you have a, a federated tenant. It's a logic that it stays only on the ODL. Because we don't want, basically we could have said, okay, this network and that network connect, but how do you know that you have a permission to connect them? We want it to be not just admin level, also by to create, a, a, to remain with the same walls as OpenStack has, which has users, tenants, a, authorization. So if, for example, if you have federated Keystone, Okay, between the sides, then we could we can connect to a federated keystone, and that's it. You're done there. What we wanted to also to be able to do that is not to enforce that capabilities. Okay, so even if you don't have a federated keystone, just say on the level of, of the ODL, saying like, here's the username and password for this OpenStack. This is the username and password for this OpenStack. Take read the permissions that I have in each one of them, and then expose me to my networks in, that I have in each one of them and let me choose which one I can connect. No, I can understand that, but it really behooves you to replicate the kind of uh, role-based access control that you would have with Keystone in a federated open daylight, because otherwise you will have the weakest link in, in the chain in terms of uh, authorization of replication. Yeah, we totally agree. Keystone Federation is better, okay? We just, uh, if there is Keystone Federation, we'll, we'll connect to that. But it's not there yet. So there's at least one more solution. It could be Keystone Federation, and the open data is not something that we will show as a full solution, but it's not really a production really there. Okay. And the third solution is to have really manage your uh, multi sites using an orchestration system and have your tenants and users in the orchestration system. And that orchestration system.
Uh, uh, what we're showing here is that even if you manually configure every site separately, then o ODL has the capability of connecting them, but it's under the assumption that you can actually do that sharing without conflict. That's something that ODL in itself cannot take care of because it's already existing. Okay, just uh, what is the current status and one, where we want to go. Uh, okay, so the current status is actually this one. Okay, the capabilities that we already have to connect the site, to show the site, uh, monitor and troubleshooting as the example that I showed. Um, as Ariel mentioned, most of the code right now, it's uh, downstream code, okay, because we start working on that in the middle of Born and didn't want to expose new API and changes and major changes. The plan is to uh, upstream everything uh, to Carbon, both the Federation and the cross-site manager, the UI. And this UI is based on uh, Next, which is something which is available as part of uh, ODL. And, and of course, to improve it, make it more reliable and stuff like that. This is the plan that we have for now. Um, and that's it. Any question are welcome. Uh, yeah. Okay, so what we have right now, okay, uh, our plugin code, the Netvir, the Netvir plugin code, is basically listen to MD salt changes uh, of neutron ports. Okay, neutron ports or interface from Genius, it doesn't matter. And once it gets uh, this notification, uh, the Netvir plugin uh, federate the information using the federation service that we have a different session on. But let's assume there is a magic that federate the information from a specific that port that was created in one side to all the other side. Now the shadow nodes and shadow ports that created in the other side are get into the MD cell of the other ODL and like the same way that it came, the same as it came from uh, OpenStack that configured the, through the northbound. So once you have the MD cell ready uh, in the other side, anything should work the same. So port will be configured, tunnel will be automatically configured if it needs, everything is supposed to be the same. We are using the same mechanism of NetWirt, just inject uh, some uh, data into the MD salt and let him continue from there. This is the... So for, for the actual federation part, there's no change, okay? Whatever networking ODL provides, V1, V2, we use that, it's good enough. The only thing that we need to extract from OpenStack is the, for, for that GUI to have a, a user a role a, a responsibilities that's currently not provided by ODL, okay? And you, we approach the Nova API uh, to get that information. So that's something else that we build in order to expose the relationship. But that's something uh, so that uh, if, if the other person mentioned, you also need to have federated uh, IPAN if you want, um, so that uh, yeah. you, you, you would not. Uh, otherwise, the default has to be that you will have uh, some routing in between and you're dealing with uh, IP address duplications and all of this, the other fun stuff that, that's going to be delivered. Yeah, so we should have some kind of orchestration, something above us that control is conflict. Uh, yeah, we don't have a... Yeah, what we did over here manually. Yeah. They can do it manually. Yeah, but uh, since it's a centralized uh, code, okay, you can say that one of the sides can return an error if you identify conflict. So, and I don't know, you can, I'm not sure you want. <laughs> uh, 
and, and I don't know, block the federation and block the con interest between site connectivity, just to make sure there are no conflicts. Yeah. Is there a plan for a CLI for this? Everything is a. Uh, it's based on ODL, so you have an uh, Caraf RP, uh, RPCs. So yeah, this is the CLI, and everything is REST-based. It's just an. It is any RPC is also a CLI-based and uh, JSON REST-based. You can invoke it from uh, any way you want. And they're in Netvirt, the code in Netvirt, which is we based on. And there is an automatic tunnel creation, which is any node that belongs to a specific network, all the nodes of a specific network, uh, Netvirt will create a tunnel, a mesh tunnel between them. So once you create a new VM attached to a network, uh, the node of this VM will be part of transport, uh, transport zone. This is the name of the genus object that manage all the tunnels. And all the endpoint in this transport zone will have a tunnel between them. This is uh, this is, this is an automatic. Sites, right? it's, and it might be between sites. If okay, the, once you have the endpoint of the IP of the OVS that from the other side, you just create a tunnel into it. Yeah. Yeah, it should be. Uh, it's a VXLAN that uh, must have connectivity between the two sides. It's the same. The why it's double? It's the same. Just uh, yeah, it's the same VXLAN. So you you can you can put your um, uh, the IP address of the VXLAN in a public IP if you want. Or and private. And that you can go through the internet. Or you decided to have a VPN between. That's, that's a separate that's deployment discussion. So if another site is not using VXLAN, it's going to be there as a network. So it's still connected. So it's open uh, stack uh, stuff. VXLAN to VLAN not existing in open stack. So you have to have the same uh, pr provider, provider for that uh, VLAN. And for that VLAN should be the same. What? Yeah. VLAN should be the same. Yeah, if you want a VXLAN to VLAN, you use how to VTEP. Okay? And you can. So that's, you have to put in the other side VXLAN, how to VTEP, and then goes to the back to the VLAN. So you can do that. So that's a separate solution. Combining a separate solution together. Even if they use the same provider network type, the VNIs, uh, different sites may be different. Yeah, maybe different. How do you plan split between the VNIs? So the that's, uh, that's a current limitation in the network implementation because the VNI goes through, uh, through the network, and uh, the, but uh, it's, it's solvable. So. so the assumption is uh, dependent to the, the, the network of VNI should be uh, the, at the moment, uh, the, the, there is a battle between segmentation ID and uh, the VNIs uh, in the current network code, but that can be fixed, so that's what we're planning to fix it in PowerPoint. And you can okay. have a different segment yeah. in each location. So we need to finish because other. Okay. Um, sorry. Um, ah, it's a question. Um, right now, we don't look into the uh, segmentation ID, we don't look into the VNI. Or the only thing that's required is that it has to be within the same transport zone. For us to uh, uh, build a full mesh. For the VXLAN mesh, that the tunnel that we were uh, talking about. Yeah. No, You're saying for creation the tunnels. Yeah. yeah, but I think you yeah, mentioned for the, the traffic itself to allow the other side to accept the, right. this one, you must have the VNI in the other side. Right. And this one is properly federated by the federation. The other side is aware of the, the VNI that is used. Okay, thanks. Thank you.